All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We are here and excited to talk about Kitsap Great Give. Uh, today's training primarily is gonna be focused on getting to know the new platform for the Kitsap Great Give. Uh, so we'll walk you through an agenda, get you comfortable with the new platform, what you need to do to get onboarded and registered, go over some of the basics, uh, key dates to remember, et cetera, uh, to get you and your campaign off and running for the Kitsap Great Give. I am Bethany Natoli from the Mighty Cause team. Uh, as you'll hear more about uh, shortly, Mighty Cause is the new platform partner uh, supporting the Kitsap Community Foundation team. We're the technology partner uh, supporting the Giving Day, but we're also joined by a team of wonderful people from the Community Foundation uh, Shane, Melissa, Gretchen, happy to let you all pop in and say a quick hello if you'd like, um, or just one of you, whatever whatever you prefer to do, but we're joined by the Kids Have Community Foundation team as well. Sure, thanks, Bethany. Um, I will go. So this is Shane Shramling. I'm the Funds and Grants Officer at the Community Foundation. We're delighted to uh, welcome Mighty Cause and just really appreciate all the people who are participating for nonprofits and on behalf of the foundation, uh, we are excited for another year. This is like one of the most fun events that we do. So we are uh, deeply appreciative to all of you guys for taking time today and and welcome you. And I'm gonna let Gretchen and Melissa go ahead and introduce themselves too. So how about Gretchen next? Uh, hello, Sorry, I mute myself. Um, welcome everybody, thank you all for coming. And I am the creative and marketing um, officer at the Kids Up Community Foundation. So my, uh, I tell everybody that my job is to, to make us look good and to make the Kids Up Great Give look good. Um, great to give, yeah. And uh, I'll be working on lots of materials for you in the coming weeks, uh, as far as the nonprofit toolkit and materials that you can use in your marketing campaigns as well for the Great Give. Hello, everybody. My name is Melissa Luatua. I'm the Development Associate here at Kitsap Community Foundation, and I'm very, very glad to see all of you on this um, webinar. It is our first year with Mighty Cause, and we're really excited about this change. I, I personally really like the platform, um, but it's a learning curve, and I'm really glad that you're all here. Um, I'm the development associate here. I deal with many, many things. Um, and Great Give, just as Shane mentioned, is one of our favorites. So we're happy that you're all here. We're happy that we're all learning and we're grateful for Bethany and all the things that we can um, be taught today. So it's going to be a great time and we're always here to help. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, just a quick overview of the agenda for today, as I mentioned. We're gonna start with some of the basics about the Kids Out Great Give event, talk a little bit about what's new this year with that platform transition, spend most of our time focused on the actual platform itself. How can you get started? How can you get registered? What can you do on the platform? Where can you navigate some of the most important things that you're going to be looking for? End it off with some key dates to remember so that you can get your timeline scheduled out between now and April, and then we'll make time at the end for Q&A. So again, in case you missed it earlier, feel free as we're going through the webinar today, type any questions you have into that Q&A. We'll do our best to cover as many questions as we can towards the end. If we run out of time, as long as you post a question in the Q&A, we will have that information and we can make sure to follow up with you after today's training. So Shane, I'm gonna send it back over to you to kind of kick us off and give us a little bit of introductory information about the Giving Day before uh, I go into more detail on the platform. Sounds great. Uh, so as many of you know, Kids Up Community Foundation has been doing the Great Give. This is our 10th year, so it's kind of a fun anniversary. I was here when our former uh, CEO talked about bringing a giving day to the community. And some people had heard Seattle Foundation was doing Give Big. And so we thought, let's do one in Kitsap. So thanks to the support of the United Way of Kitsap County, they're our presenting partner and many other sponsors. Um, it's a, it, you know, it's built as a 24 hour give day that it unites our community. There's, I think last year we had 384 nonprofits, uh, which is amazing. Just tons of all volunteer organizations, 
um, some that have huge staff. And what I love about the event is it really brings the entire Kitsap Peninsula and North Mason area together in one day, all doing good for our community. And in the 10 years we've been doing this, we've raised over 14 million. We, meaning you, the nonprofits, have raised over 14 million. So it's amazing. People didn't think we would do as well as we did. So we love it. Uh, early giving will open on Saturday, April 1st. And the big day this year is going to be on Tuesday, April 11th. Uh, we, we got some feedback that people wanted it actually before tax time. So we're listening to you and we just can't wait to get started. It's always a lot of work to switch platforms. So we appreciate everybody's patience um, as we move forward, but we think you are going to love some of the changes. So I'll turn it back over to you, Bethany. Great, and I'll, I'll kick off a little on this slide and then Shane, please feel free to chime in with anything I miss uh, on this or any, any other information you wanna add. This is just a little bit of uh, eligibility information about who can participate. As I mentioned in a little bit, we'll talk about how you can participate, how you can get registered. But of course you'll wanna be a registered 501c3 <laughs> up to date on your tax filing, serve the residents of Kitsap and North Mason. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, register, register, register. Uh, registration deadline is Thursday, February 9th. So I don't know that I think I got most everything, but anything else, please let me know, Shane, if I missed anything. You're good. Great. All right. So then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this year, new to the Kitsap Great Give is Mighty Cause. We are the technology platform partner uh, that will be working with the Kitsap Community Foundation to help make this event happen. Uh, so we are very excited uh, to have the opportunity to partner with the Community Foundation and all of your all of you participating nonprofits. Uh, Mighty Cause has been in the Giving Day space since about 2007, 2008. Uh, we've helped partner foundations and companies run hundreds of Giving Days uh, for you know, as small as 20 participating nonprofits up to over 5,000 participating nonprofits, raising $100,000 in their day up to 50, 60 million in their day. So. We have many years of experience with Giving Days, uh, and we're really excited to bring our um, our experience and our features and functionality to this event. And look forward to walking you through today what you know what you might be able to take advantage of on this new platform. Um, but we know very well that you know with any transition, there is always the potential for a little hesitation. Uh, change can be overwhelming, and we've really done our best in partnership with the Community Foundation to try and ease that transition for you uh, wherever possible. And so the key way that we've done that is by migrating data and information from your previous platform onto your existing profile page on the new platform. So what that looks like is the Kitsap Food Bank, for example,'s profile on the old platform. We copied over as much information content as we could in terms of the mission statement, the story, your logo, et cetera. So when you log on to the platform for the first time, if your organization had participated in the past, you should see a, a familiar profile, not a blank profile that you need to fill in. We migrated in three years of donation history. So, even though last year's event took place on a different platform, you're still able to access your donor history, your donor contact information so that you can reach out to and engage those donors for this year's giving day. And we have a specific tool that I'll show later uh, that's really built to help make that donor retention uh, piece of your communications uh, really quickly, uh, really quick uh, and easy as a part of your strategy this year. And the final thing that we migrated over was your admin user accounts. So if you had a user account on the old platform, you will be able to use that same email address to log into an existing account that we have pre-created for you on the new platform. So your first step will be setting or resetting a password on the new platform 
to align with that same email address that you've used on the old platform. So we'll get into that a little bit more in a moment, but just wanted to walk you through a little bit of that process, why we did it and what content uh, and information you'll see carried over from the past platform in an effort to really streamline your transition, uh, allow you to focus as much energy as possible this year on building a great fundraising campaign and less on trying to start from scratch on a new platform. So <clears throat> the first thing to do is of course, get started and register. So I talked about this just a little bit a moment ago. For those of you that had a, an account on the previous platform, we pre-created an account for you on the new platform. And that account that we've created for you is already connected to your nonprofit organization, has access to that nonprofit's page, data, content, et cetera. So all you need to do is to set a new password for that account. So what that can look like is in an email that you would have received last week from the foundation, there was a link to set your password on the registration page on the platform, there is a button to reset your password. Or if you're starting from scratch, you just wanna come and try to log in. All you wanna do is enter your email address and click forgot password. And you'll get a link in your email to set to reset your password and that should allow you to log in. For anybody that's brand new, uh, we're of course welcoming to you as well. Uh, there will be no account pre-created for you, of course, but you'll have the ability to create a new user account before you start the registration form. So you create that new user account, either um, linking your Google, uh, Google account or just a single email sign-on. You'll want to, once you log in, whether you're a new or returning user, your first step is completing this registration form. So I've got a little screenshot here of your starting uh, starting point in the registration form, you'll enter the name or EIN of your organization. And that's where um, you'll uh, get started. You'll complete information on this form. There's a series of questions. Once you complete that form, your next step in the registration process is to complete a to-do list that you will find on your profile page. Um, and I'll walk you through where you find that and what's on that to-do list. Filling out the registration form and then completing that to-do list will meet your requirements for participation. And then the foundation staff will do their review, make sure that you have uh, the appropriate statuses for the state of Washington, et cetera. And then after that time, they will be reviewing and approving uh, profiles for uh, participation in the event. So we'll walk through that in more detail, but at a very high level, you're going to log in, complete the registration form, and then complete your to-do list. Those are your sort of three immediate next steps to get yourself started. For those of you that have already logged in, already filled out the registration form, you're in great shape. Um, and for anyone joining today who has not yet started, that will be where you get started. So after you do that, you really get to kind of shift focus into the next, um, next phase of the campaign, which is customizing your profile a little bit more. Um, in that to-do list, you will complete all the required elements of your profile, but you can always continue to tweak and customize the profile so that you're telling a powerful story, getting your donors excited about giving. And then off-platform, what does your fundraising campaign look like for this year's Great Give? Um, how are you going to be promoting your campaign? What channels are going to be used? Are you using to promote? Um, are you going to consider peer-to-peer -peer fundraising as a part of your strategy for this year? And then, of course, when early giving starts on April 1st, you kick into that final phase, which is raising money for your cause. So before I uh, walk, I'm going to walk through uh, deck here today in the remainder of our time where I'm going to walk you through what you can do in each um, location on the platform, if you will. But I'm going to pause for a quick moment, jump out of this deck and walk you through a, a quick live demo of the kitsapgreatgive.org 
website, what you can find where, and then a very quick overview of your dashboard just to help you visualize some of that initial clicking around. How do you get where you want to go? Then we're going to come back into this deck and get reoriented about what you can accomplish and where you can accomplish it on the platform. So um, I'm going to allow anybody to uh, chime in if for some reason you're not seeing the new screen that I've shared, uh, but I think it should be up for you all sharing. Uh, I'm now on the kitsapgreatgive.org website. Uh, so I'm away from the uh, deck at this point. Um, we, can we can all see it. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Appreciate that feedback. <laughs> so from kitsapgreatgive.org, you'll land right here. Of course, your primary call to action is registration. As we've talked about, I've already said that word too many times in our brief webinar so far, that's your most important first step. Um, but just quick orientation for you. There's some quick links up here for information. And in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, that's where you're gonna log into your account. So after you create your account, go through registration, when you're coming back to the platform time and time again to either access donor data, update your profile, et cetera, that login button is always gonna be in the upper right-hand corner. You're gonna click on that and then you'll see the options for uh, logging in. I'm gonna stay logged out for right now and just show you a couple of other things that I wanna call out. If you scroll down the page, you'll see Again, more quick links to some important information, FAQs, resources, uh, the more FAQs, these are donor focused, these are gonna be nonprofit focused FAQs, a toolkit with resources, information um, about sponsors, and then of course, clicking on the registration page here, you'll see some uh, introductory information. This is that reset password button I mentioned to you before. You'll have to log in, and once you log in, whether you're creating a new account or logging into an existing account we've pre-created for you, clicking this button will start your registration form. So wanted to start you off with that. And now I am gonna zoom in more to your experience as an organization, as an administrator for your nonprofit. So I am now in this screen logged in as myself uh, on a on an account uh, that I manage for the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation. That's the nonprofit account that we're viewing right now. So the view that I'm seeing right now is the exact same view that you will see for your nonprofit. When you log into the platform, again, from that upper right-hand corner, instead of log in, you'll now see your name and uh, a photo if you choose to upload a, a profile photo. Hovering over your name there will allow you to scroll down this user menu. You'll see organization, and then where I see Mighty Cause Foundation, you'll see the name of the nonprofit that you manage. And if you manage more than one, if you're a part of more than one nonprofit, you're administrator for more than one, you'll see multiple here. So clicking on the name of your organization here will open up this dashboard here. This is your organization's dashboard on the platform. You as an administrator will always be brought right here to your overview screen. Um, this is where you'll see key metrics um, about your organization's activity. You'll see very important to-do list. We'll come back to this uh, in a little mo in, in a moment um, in the deck and walk through the detail here. But this to-do list is where you're going to uh, follow through and complete all the items on that to-do list. It's also will you see either a prompt to complete the registration form if you haven't started it yet, or once you have started the process, right here is where you'll see an indication of if your registration is pending for Kids Upgrade Give or if your registration has been approved. Your status will always be visible here. Moving down the dashboard, just to call it a few items, your organization page, this is the profile page that you are going to customize and build out. Again, as a returning organization, you won't be starting from a blank page. You will see content, but you're welcome to customize and refresh any content that you'd like. Fundraising tools is where you'll find some exciting fundraising tools. We're not gonna spend a ton of time on this today, but for example, peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, 
matching grants. Those are some fun features that are available on the platform that you might want to explore and that we will come back to in our second webinar where we talk a little bit more about um, things that you can do on the platform. Uh, reports, this is where you'll access your donation reports. Uh, so all donations will include the full, um, full uh, amount of all of your donations on the platform. If there's recurring giving, retention report we'll come back to later. This is that one that I mentioned earlier that I think will be hopefully especially useful for everybody during this year's Great Give. Checkout is where you'll have the ability to customize the checkout process for your donors. In terms of what are the suggested donation levels donors are seeing on the platform when they make a gift to your organization, what does the thank you page look like after they complete their gift, and then what are they see receiving in a receipt, uh, and then settings, you'll um, control some of your organization setting here in term in according to you want to update your organization's legal address, for example, setting up EFT for direct deposit disbursement and adding, removing, managing any administrators for your account. So I walked through this very quickly, but I did it on purpose. We're going to go back and refresh all of this information, but I wanted to, before I spent the rest of the time in a deck, I just wanted to click into the, pro the platform live and allow you all to see kind of how I can navigate from my user profile to my organization's dashboard and down the key items on the dashboard that you're gonna to want to come back to uh, and manage throughout the campaign. So now I'm gonna jump back into the deck and sort of re-go over in slower, uh, slower pace some of the things that we just covered there. So again, the dashboard, I walked you through the key pages on that dashboard, but just to reiterate, the overview screen, you as an administrator will be dropped there whenever you click on your dashboard. Donors, visitors to your page can of course not see that overview. That's just for you as an admin. Uh, so check back there for your registration status throughout the campaign. But it's also the place where the Community Foundation might be posting announcements for you with information about upcoming events, trainings, information uh, on the Great Give. The organization page, next item down your dashboard, that's the profile page. That's what you're going to build, uh, where you're going to customize content. That's the page that you will share with donors. That's where they will click the donate button and make their initiate their donation process. That fundraising tools folder has all of those kind of ampli amplification tools for fundraising, if you will. Uh, some organizations may not really take advantage of that, uh, and that's okay. But for anybody that's looking to really take their campaign to the next level, you want to engage peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, you want to um, get matching grants uh, that you secure from a local partner and add that to your campaign, that's possible through that folder. Reports, just like it sounds, that's where you access all of your reporting information. We'll come back and talk a little bit about disbursements later on, um, but one of the reports that you'll have access to is a disbursement report so that you can reconcile uh, the funds that you're receiving from direct deposit with the exact amount, any fees, what donations were included, et cetera. Um, checkout flow, uh, as we talked about, you can customize and preview that checkout experience. So I always encourage organizations to preview the checkout experience start to finish before the event, especially because the platform is new this year. Uh, the Mighty Cause team offers customer support. We are here for you and your donors with any questions during the campaign, but we always uh, encourage uh, participants to get comfortable with what that flow looks like ahead of the event. And then finally, all your settings down there at the last item of the dashboard. So the profile page, as I've mentioned, this is really the page that you will be sharing with your supporters. So it's the link is going to look something like kitsapgreatgive.org slash organization slash Kitsap Community Foundation, for example. 
That's the link that you're going to share. This is the page that you're going to share. So it's yours to tell a story with. And as I've mentioned for past participants, you'll see a logo already there. You'll see a, an image there at the top. You'll see text content in that story section. So you may not need to enter something, but we absolutely encourage you to use this as an opportunity to refresh that. Make sure that the content really tells a, a dynamic story that is going to be compelling for your donors to get them to want to make a gift. Uh, your to-do list. I clicked into this briefly when I was in the live demo. Um, this is something you can access while you're on your overview screen, but throughout your dashboard, you'll always see a little indicator of your to-do list right towards the top of the screen. And if you have outstanding items on your to-do list, if there are things that are incomplete, there will be a little red circle always on that to-do list, just like you, know, you see on your uh, email icon or messages, if you have unread messages, um, that will be your indicator that you still have action to take in your to-do list. And when you open that to-do list, you'll see there's kind of two categories of tasks that you're going to be asked to complete as a part of that to-do list. On the left here is going to be the requirements. That's things that you need to complete in order to have your page, your organization reviewed for participation in the event. That's going to be basic page completion items like the logo, about section, uh, needs, which uh, we'll talk a little bit more later. That is going to be similar to the 10 words uh, that were, was used on the past platform. So um, Shane and team, either now or when I come back to this later, please feel free to chime in if you want to add more about the context of that 10 word description. Um, but that's what the needs section uh, of the profile allows for here. You'll have the ability to uh, select search categories to help inform when donors come to the platform and they're searching for organizations by mission category, et cetera. Uh, you can help inform, make sure that your organization is gonna show in those right places, set up EFT for direct deposit and enter some information about your organization's leader. Um, so those are the required elements that you'll need to complete. Beyond that, there are a couple of other re recommended items that you are encouraged to complete, but not required to complete. When you open your to-do list, clicking on any one of these items will take you to the place on your page, take you to the place in your profile where you need to complete that. So we really encourage you to think about your, you know, your registration, your completion in two steps. Step one, fill out your registration form. Step two, walk through the to-do list, click on every item, click on it, complete it. Go back to the to-do list, click on the next thing, complete it. Uh, you can always go back and refine your profile, um, but that's gonna be kind of the easiest way to walk you through what you need to do in order to you know, complete your uh, application uh, basically for the event. Bethany, can I um, just chime in here because it seems like it makes sense. We did have one question in the chat, which is how long does the banking verification process take? Great question. Um, I can talk a little bit more about this later, but just to answer that question uh, briefly, it can be it can be immediate or it can take 24 to 48 hours. It depends. Um, our platform integrates with a banking database called GAIACT and uh, a large number of banks across the country are a part of that Guy Act database. And so with that database integration, when you when your nonprofit goes to set up your EFT, you'll be prompted to enter the routing number and the account number for the bank account that you're trying to connect. We will then run that against the Guy Act database, which will check to verify that that routing number and account number match the legal name of your organization and the EIN of your organization uh, as pulled from the IRS database. If those match, if, if that banking system can find a match, then your EFT is approved immediately with, uh, with no further action needed. We have some uh, organizations, some banks are of course smaller credit unions, for example, that may not participate in that uh, Guy Act database. So in the event that we're not able to automatically verify it, 
we will ask for further documentation, whether that be a bank letter or a voided check. So for those of you that can be verified immediately, it will be immediate. Uh, for those that need to provide additional documentation, that documentation is then gonna be reviewed by the customer support team. And that's what can take uh, you know, a couple of days for review, depending on how soon you can get that documentation into the team. Hopefully that helps uh, answer that question. Uh, and again, I'll talk a little bit more about disbursements as we um, get later on to help make sure everybody's uh, familiar with what the process looks like, what to expect on disbursement timeline, et cetera. So focusing in on the profile page, the editing experience, throughout the platform, you will find on-page editing for pages that you're trying to customize. So in the top right of the page, you'll see an edit mode toggle. You can flip it to on. You'll see pencil mark icons kind of jump up across the page. That's your indication that clicking on that pencil icon will allow you to make an edit. Switching that toggle away from edit mode will give you a preview of what the donor visitor will see when they come to the page. Uh, so. We've covered most of these things already. Uh, the only thing I'll call out here is that for your um, background image that's up there at the top, you do have the ability to choose something from our gallery. If you don't have a great image, you're not loving what you find, um, or you can add a filter color over top of that image if you want to help your logo pop out a little bit more against the image, that's an option. Um, and you do have the ability to set a theme color for your page. So setting a theme color will allow, maybe it's you know your primary color from your logo, for example. That means headings and call to action buttons on your page will follow that same theme color that you've set for your organization. So it's just a nice way to kind of have a little bit of consistency for your organization's brand throughout your profile page. Another thing that you'll be able to customize on your profile is page metrics and a giving activity timeline. So you have the ability to add an optional goal and progress bar to your page. You don't have to have a goal displayed on your page, although it's of course a best practice when you're participating in a campaign like this to set a goal and share that goal on your page. Uh, when you share that goal and there is a progress bar that's counting up in real time during the campaign, you're allowing your donors to kind of come on that journey with you, see the progress that you're making towards your goal, and of course, hopefully, encourage them to want to contribute to that. So you can set an optional goal. You can edit that goal at any time. So if you set a $10,000 goal in advance and then halfway through the giving day, you meet that goal, you're absolutely welcome to log on in the middle of the giving day and increase that goal if you want to reach more. Um, you know, set a stretch goal, for example. Uh, you can also choose the metrics that are being displayed. Uh, you have the ability to show the amount raised as well as the number of donors. Um, and then the giving activity feed, uh, kind of a timeline, if you will, an optional section on your page if you'd like to showcase uh, the some social proof of the giving. John Smith gave $25, Jim gave $50, for example. Any donor that requests that their name or amount uh, be hidden when they're completing the checkout process, of course, their information will not show on this activity feed. Uh, but for those donors that are comfortable with their information being shared, uh, it can be a nice way to add some more uh, of a dynamic element to your profile page. Below your metrics is your story section. So again, and I know I've repeated this a few times, there will be text here. We have imported text from the previous platform, um, but this is a dynamic inline editor. You don't just have to use text. You can use formatting, bullets, you know, headers, et cetera. You can change color on the text here. You can add photos, videos, links. Um, we encourage you to really make this dynamic. Nobody wants to read a wall of text. So use the tools that you have available here uh, and um, tell a dynamic story. You'll see a little save button. 
uh, in the upper right hand corner of this section. Make sure that if you come onto your page and make edits to this story, click save there uh, before you leave the page so that your uh, content changes are uh, remembered. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, mission statement uh, is another uh, field that we have brought over from the previous platform. Uh, so you'll see, uh, for those of you that were on the previous platform, you'll see a mission statement already available, as well as the need statement, uh, which is the 10 words. So Shane, anything you want to add on that 10 word description? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Bethany. So the 10 word description, we use Sound Publishing, uh, which has the Bainbridge Review, Central Kids Up Reporter, a few others. They, they have a publication which lists all the organizations that are participating in the Great Give. So it has your organization name, it has the website, and then it has this 10 word description. So you don't need to repeat the name. We've imported everything from last year. So if you don't need to make changes, don't worry about it. If you go over 10 words, we might need to truncate it. So I highly recommend you just kind of leave it as is. Um, it's really distilled down on what your organization does. And again, you, you don't have to repeat your name in it because your name is right above. So, and that will show up on your profile page as well, I believe. Yes. Um, I should chime into this is Gretchen, that there were some uh, nonprofits that participated previously, but had mighty, uh, yeah, mighty cause profiles for other campaigns, and their need statements may not have transferred. Is that correct? Yes. So uh, there are some participants, um, maybe you're joining us today, maybe you're not joining us live today, there are some organizations that have participated or currently participate in other giving days that happen on the Mighty Cause platform. And as Gretchen mentioned, for those organizations, we wanted to be uh, extra cautious about how we did a migration. So we didn't want to override content you might have had existing on your profile. Your organization, if you are one of those um, participating organizations that have done other campaigns on the platform, your donation history still got um, carried over. So you'll still have access to previous Kitsap uh, donation history, but you may not see the mission statement or the need statement, for example. All right. So moving kind of down the profile page, optional things that you can consider. Uh, you don't have to do it, uh, but you have the ability to connect, um, either upload uh, media on your page in the form of images. Uh, for video, we encourage you to do that right in the story uh, that I talked about above, inline uh, video editing, uh, video adding. Um, if you have just additional photos you want to add, you can do that in a media gallery, but you also have the ability to connect your Instagram account or a Facebook account to, um, to pull from one of those. You can either pull from your Instagram feed. So every time you add a new post on Instagram, that photo will automatically show on your profile page on the platform or you can connect a Facebook album. So when you add a new photo to a Facebook album, that will get added as well. Both of those are just kind of nice supplemental ways to keep your page dynamic with, without having to come back to the platform on a regular basis and update it. You do also have the ability in your settings to update the social share uh, context. So uh, you can change the, you can set a specific social share image, specific language so that when your uh, page is, when somebody comes to your page and clicks share on Facebook, share on Twitter, et cetera, that card, if you will, that the image and the text that's associated with that share, you have the ability to customize that. So uh, options to uh, really kind of go above and beyond, not required, uh, but optional to do so. Moving into some of the uh, features and functionality off the profile page itself. Donations report, of course, I, I mentioned uh, earlier, whenever a donation is made to your nonprofit, anybody that is a listed administrator will receive an automatic email notification. If you don't want to receive a notification every time an email is made, 
or a donation is made, excuse me, you can go into your user profile and change that setting. But by default, any administrator will receive a notification whenever any, a donation is made. You can always come to this donation report at any time throughout the campaign and access your donation data in real time. You'll see right on screen uh, some of the key fields of information, but if you click to download, you'll see the full detail uh, of donor information, address, email, amount, et cetera. Um, as I mentioned, we did import historical donation data from the previous platform. So um, you will be able to access and download that information to contact prior year's donors. And just know that when you come to this report, by default, it's going to show you the previous 30 days. So for many organizations, if you go to your donations report today, it's going to default to the last 30 days and you might see zero activity. But if you change that time filter, uh, look back a full year, for example, or if you want to filter by campaign type, for example, you could filter by giving event and you'd have the ability to select previous year's great give campaigns and then just see the donors associated with that campaign. So the retention report is one that I mentioned earlier. I showed you where to find this on the dashboard. This is one of my favorite tools for a nonprofit to take advantage of as a part of a giving day campaign. This is a big reason why we wanted to make sure that your donation history was available and accessible for you is this report. You can access it in the middle of the day on Kitsap Great Give, and it will give you a quick snapshot of what donors gave last year during Kitsap Great Give that have either been retained this year or have not yet been retained this year. You can filter to see what you're looking for. Um, but in two clicks, for example, you could access a list of the 20 donors that gave last year that haven't yet given again this year. That's a very quick list that you can download and share with your board, share with your executive director, or pick up the phone yourself, send emails. It's up to you how you want to reach out to those unretained donors. But that's a really um, obviously critical list of donors to connect with. Uh, to they, you know, it's a lot easier to retain a donor than it is to acquire a new donor. And across the fundraising sector, across giving days, um, is no different. Donor retention rates are always lower than they should be. So this is a, meant to be a very concrete way uh, for you to, in the middle of the campaign, without having to do a ton of Excel um, work for comparison, uh, to see who you need to contact to improve your donor retention rate. Disbursement details. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but just kind of going to go in a little bit more detail now. This year, uh, with the Kitsap Great Give, donations are going to be processed and dispersed by the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation, and they will be regranted to participants. So that is why you're being prompted to sign up for EFT Direct Deposit, so that the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation can get you your donations by direct deposit uh, for the campaign. So you can sign up in the settings tab of your page. This is a, a quick uh, screenshot here of what that sign up looks like. I mentioned this earlier. Uh, for many organizations, entering their routing and account number and selecting the account type might be all the information you need to give us. And then that database is going to work in the back end to try and verify your account. You'll receive information immediately, whether it's been approved and verified or if we need more information to do that. Once you're signed up for direct deposit, the schedule for disbursements is twice monthly. So any donations received from the 1st to the 15th of a month will be dispersed to your organization by EFT on or around the 25th of that same month. Any donations raised in the second half of the month will be sent on or around the 10th of the following month. So we'll come back to in the key dates at the end and just help make sure it's really clear when you expect your funds from the campaign. Um, but it is a twice monthly schedule and each direct deposit will come with a corresponding report that is in the application for reconciliation. 
So again, I called this out uh, when we were talking about reports earlier. You can access a disbursement report for any EFT that you receive from the charitable foundation. And that should help you reconcile dollar for dollar, penny for penny, exactly what you received, what is and isn't included. Uh, just a note, prize in, in incentives, bonus pool disbursements, those will be completed by uh, on or around May 25th. So checkout flow is another important um, tool that you have the ability to customize within the platform. Um, we just like we encourage you to build a compelling story on the profile page, we encourage you to continue that story in the checkout flow. So we want, you want your donor to have a consistent experience, a consistent message from start to finish. So from the email they receive to you, to the content they see on the profile page, to the information they're seeing in the checkout, all the way through, you wanna be telling a consistent story about the impact of your work, what you're raising funds for, et cetera. So you can do that in a couple of ways. The first is uh, in on the actual donation page, you have the ability to set suggested donation levels. So you can choose the amounts, 50, 100, 250, 500, for example. You can also optionally add labels to that. So what, for example, does $100 do for your organization? Uh, does it sponsor a child to go through a week of programming? Or does it buy food for a family of four for a week? Uh, it's gonna be something different for each organization, but something as little as adding a label to the dollar amount here helps the donors connect the tangible impact of their $100 gift or $200 gift. And it also gives you uh, the ability to kind of help move your donors slightly up, uh, up the tier of um, what, what dollar amounts you're encouraging them to give. Um, you'll also, of course, just like on the donation, just like on the profile page, there's gonna be a toggle in the edit um, functionality here where you can preview the checkout flow as a donor would see it versus opening up these editing tools and allowing you to customize the experience. After the actual donation page itself is the post checkout experience. Uh, and there's kind of two aspects that you have the ability to customize and we encourage you to customize both. The first is a thank you page that donors will see on screen when they complete their gift. So they complete their donation, click submit, click pay, for example, they'll then see on screen a message from your nonprofit thanking them for their gift. So immediate stewardship opportunity that you don't have to do anything uh, except for set this thank you page in advance. You have the ability with an inline editor here as well uh, to add photos, videos, personal story, uh, message from your executive director, whatever it might be, you can kind of tell tell that immediate thank you to the donor right here on the screen. Uh, and then you also have the ability to customize, add custom language into the thank you receipt. So when a donation is made on the platform, an automatic tax receipt is going to be sent to the donor immediately. You don't need to do anything to send that tax acknowledgement. But by adding language into the donation receipt, uh, which you can access through your dashboard, you will insert a custom message into that acknowledgement email. So again, by filling out the thank you page and adding content on that receipt, that's two different touch points for you, very immediate post donation stewardship that you don't have to do anything manually for. Of course, we will encourage you to go beyond that for the thank you, post event, come back, tell the donors what you were able to accomplish with their gift, what you raised overall, what you expect in terms of impact. Um, but there are tools built into the platform to really streamline that. And we really encourage you to take advantage of those stewardship opportunities. Settings, last item down on the dashboard. Again, I previewed some of this earlier, but some of the key things that you'll do here, adding and removing administrators. So for those that 
managed your account on the previous platform, all of those individuals should have access to your uh, nonprofit's account on the new platform. But if there was turnover, if somebody left, if you had a new staff member, you can manage that yourself by clicking on admins. You can remove anyone that should no longer have access and you can add anybody that should new have access. This is also where you under disbursement settings would sign up for direct deposit. Uh, and then if you want to update your legal name or legal address on the platform, that's something you would do here under organization info. Uh, so the Mighty Cause platform um, imports the IRS database on a once monthly basis so that we're making sure that we are staying in sync and up to date on 501c3 status for nonprofit organizations. Um, and so the legal name and legal address that are associated with your account will be what's on file with the IRS database. If you've had a name change, you're going through a name change or an address change, you'll need to provide proof in the form of documentation in order to make those changes on the platform. And so within the organization info section on your page, you will be walked through how to submit that documentation for review by our customer support team. Um, I previewed where to find this on the website earlier, but make sure to make use of the nonprofit toolkit that's on the platform, as Gretchen mentioned. Um, there's great stuff on there already, and there's going to be more information coming soon. Uh, this recording for today's training will be up there shortly. Um, so take advantage of the resources available there. Key dates to remember. Um, of course, registration is already open. It's closing February 9th. We will have our next webinar on February 28th. Uh, so while today's webinar focused primarily on foundational elements, getting started, getting comfortable with the platform, our next webinar will really dig a little bit deeper into strategy for the giving day, how to take advantage of some of the tools on the platform to complement your strategy, but uh, other things like uh, marketing and social media strategy as well. Monday, March 6th, deadline to secure ad space in uh, the sound publishing special insert. Early giving opens April 1st. The giving day is April 11th. So the first set of giving day donations should be dispersed to your organization on or around April 25th uh, when you sign up for direct deposit. And then as I already mentioned, uh, May 25th uh, is when uh, prize and bonus pool funds will be dispersed. couple uh, okay. notes. Okay, oh, just interject and just- um, Of course. Somebody asked a question, which was, what happens if they had the wrong email address on the, on the old platform? What's the best way to get that corrected and get access? So the best way, honestly, would just be to uh, e either reach out to our customer support team uh, and explain the situation or just create a new user account with the correct email. And when you go through the registration process, uh, you will have, you know, let's say, Shane, you had a, a, a bad email on the old system. When you go through the process of registration and you request to register the Kitsap Community Foundation, our customer support team will be reviewing and approving that this new person that is requesting access to your profile should have access to the profile. Uh, and we will grant the, the new user account access to the profile. So I think that's probably the easiest way is just to create a new user account with the correct email address. And then going through the registration process will get you access to your organization's page. The other thing is we could potentially, you know, correct a typo in an old email. Um, so perhaps reaching out to customer support, you could do it that way either. Um, either way should work. Mm -hmm. um, just a couple notes here on how to stay connected with the Kitsap Community Foundation and make sure you're using the hashtag Kitsap Great Give. Um, when we get closer to the event and on the day of, there will be a really fun uh, social media feed on the live event site that you know, pulls from that hashtag. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're a part of that conversation. Um, customer support, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, 
The Mighty Cause team offers customer support uh, and is here uh, to support you and your donors with questions throughout the campaign. Um, so you can reach us at support at mightycause.com. You'll also see a little question mark icon when you're in your organization's dashboard navigating around. There's a little question mark icon in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Clicking on that will open up access into our help tool. We have a support forum that has tons of resources, how to articles, short videos, walkthroughs of features and how to do certain things. So definitely click on that question mark and make sure that you peruse the self-help resources that we have. And if you can't find what you need, of course, feel free to reach out to us. We've also included here the information for the Kitsap Community Foundation, your local partners in the ground. Uh, they're, they're still here to support, of course, uh, but the Mighty Cause team is here uh, to help answer any technical questions you might have about how to use the platform, login issues, uh, question how to add a logo, add a video, access your donations report, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can get support from the Mighty Cause team uh, as well. And now I'm going to take a quick look at questions. We only have a few minutes left, so um, I don't know how many we'll get through, but as I mentioned, as long as you post, um, as long as you've posted something there, we can make sure to follow up with you after uh, to, um, you know, to get uh, get your question answered. So one question I've, I've been, we've been monitoring the, the Q&A a little bit. Um, somebody wants to know, can they continue to get paid by check or are we requiring an EFT? So this is really a question for, for you all at, at Shane, at the foundation. Technically on the platform, we encourage EFT. Uh, we prefer EFT because we can help you get your funds faster. They, they can come twice a month. Um, but if for some reason you cannot sign up for EFT or you really don't want to, we do have the ability to send a check on a once monthly basis to the address that's on file with the IRS database. There will be a $5 check fee associated uh, if you choose this option. Uh, so um, hopefully that's helpful in terms of uh, general uh, guidelines. Um, you can let me know, Shane, or let the participants know your requirements for participation, though. Yep, that's how we feel, too. Um, you know, doing the EFT will be a huge help, I think, to get things dispersed faster. But, you know, we'll, you know if you really, really do not want to do it, that's fine. Um, I want to go to a question, which is, um, can an organization say they have a, a program that really is funding two different types of causes and they don't, we don't want them to create two profiles. Is there a way that they can have a second, you know, like two different programs that donors can designate their, their funding towards? Yes. So in that checkout customization, um, that I mentioned earlier, I focused primarily on the donation levels that you can customize, but there is the ability to add a designation question to the checkout. So if you'd like to ask your donors to select a designation with their donation, you can do that. Um, you also have the ability, if you'd like to create um, dedicated fundraising pages, let's say there are two programs that you want to fundraise for and you'd like you know more of a content page to talk about that program to set a specific goal for that program a participating organization could have two fundraising pages that sort of both live underneath their profile page that is an option it's a little bit more work um, but depending on the importance of the different programs how you might want to market them um, it, you know, if you have a different audience that you'd send uh, one program page versus another, you might want to consider that option. Uh, but there is the ability to add a designation question to the checkout. Great, thank you. All right, we're right here at the top of the hour. Um, let me see if I, I know that there's a handful more questions in the Q&A, so I don't know that I will be able to uh, get through those. Look like I'm seeing a couple questions on uh, EFT. If, if you've sp specifically submitted one 
and you're waiting verification, you don't have to redo anything. Um, the, the team will just uh, review your uh, documentation in the order that it came in. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, last to clarify, somebody said we just to clarify, we register for the event and then complete the required to do list items. That's correct. That's what gets you in our queue. We have to do a little due diligence with the Secretary of State uh, Charities Program to make sure that you're current on your filings there. Um, yeah. So hopefully that answers your question, anonymous attendee. <laughs> and the last question that I'll answer, just because I think this is important, important one, I want to make sure there's no miscommunication. When I say funds are dispersed on a twice monthly basis, that means it's rolling. Um, it doesn't mean that your funds will be spread out over the following year for any funds that you raise. Any donations that you get to your organization's campaign account on the platform from April 1st to April 15th will be dispersed to your nonprofit around the 25th of April. Any funds in the second half of the month will be dispersed around the 10th of the following month. So this, Shane, I'm not entirely sure how different this might be from the previous platform, but you, you as a participating nonprofit have the ability to accept donations on your profile after the event ends. So if you somebody comes back to your profile page a week after the event, for example, they can still make a donation. Those funds will still be dispersed to your nonprofit. So if let's say somebody randomly clicks on the link in an old email that you've sent them in May and makes a donation, we will still make sure those funds make their way to your nonprofit. It's just that on a twice monthly basis, rolling basis, any funds that your organization has raised in that period of time will be sent to your organization. So hopefully that helps to clarify. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let everybody go for today. Thank you for your time. Uh, Mighty Cause is excited to be here uh, working with uh, the Kitsap Community Foundation team. We're excited to welcome you all to the platform. Um, if you have questions, please do feel free to reach out to either support at mightycause.com or the Community Foundation team. Uh, and again, final reminder, this recording will be posted and available on the Nonprofit Toolkit soon. Thanks so much. Thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.